Welcome back guys to another awesome Unity tutorial. I'm your host Bliskin X, and today we're going to be looking at enemy AI. Now for those of you that are new to Unity, I strongly suggest you go and have a look at some of the videos I've created. That'll get you to this specific point. It's not a series or anything. It just helps you understand player movement, player animations, tile maps, collisions, and uh, that'll give you the know-how on how to get to this specific point, you could say, in this tutorial, so that if you are new to it, you know how to do it. Now, as you can see, I've gone ahead and created a new object. I've created him, called him Slime for now, and I've gone and basically added an animation. Here you can see his first animation. If I go ahead and play that, you'll see he bounces up and down. So that's what we've done to this point, and we're going to basically start some movement. I'm going to start with him uh, getting to this in, to the player, obviously, and following the player. We will then maybe look at getting him to stop just before the player so that we can begin some sort of attack animation. And furthermore, we can go ahead and prevent him from going through the walls because once we start coding the movement, he'll probably go through this because he doesn't have what we've done with player with regards to the rigid body as well as the box collider. So we would need to do the same for him. Right, so let's go ahead. And the first thing we're going to do is go ahead and add a new component. And I'm going to type this, let's call this slime, slime underscore follow. Okay, for the for this just for this tutorial. I'm gonna go ahead and say new, and I'm gonna click create, and that will go ahead and create the script and add it there. Now we can go and double click this. For those of you that are using different IDEs, I'm using Visual Studio, Visual Code um, Studio. So feel free to use whatever you see fit. I'm gonna go ahead and just drag that in there like that. And you can go ahead and see what I'm doing. Now I have still need to update the, the extensions for Unity. So we'll have to just type this out as best as we know how. But getting the extensions, I know that the new Unity will have that built in, so that's going to be great. But in this version that I'm currently running, I don't. So we're going to see some updates here, but don't worry too much about that. So I'm just going to go ahead and minimize. Okay, so over into our, we're going to need to create a float. We're going to put that variable to keep our speed. So yeah, we're just going to go public, uh, public. Sorry, let's go public. And we're going to set a float because it's got to have a decimal to let's call it speed so we can set his speed accordingly okay stunning the next thing we're going to need to do is create a private component and that is going to be the transform uh transform to begin the player the movement obviously and that'll be our target towards our player so we can go ahead and obviously save that as well right so if i go ahead and save that now file save we should just have this pull up in our unity if i click inspect we should see this soon sort of generate here. Takes a second or two, there we go. There we can now see the speed and we can go ahead and set our speed in the uh, game once we, we get cracking. And the next thing we're gonna need to do is create a public variable for the game object. So let's go public and yeah, we're gonna go game object. There's two ways you can do this, but sometimes game object isn't picked up. So I'm just gonna do it this way. Let's call that tar for now. And if I go ahead and say that, File save, and then over onto Unity, that's gonna appear over here. And it's a lot easier this way, I much prefer it this way. Hang on, sorry, I've got an error there. Let's just quickly go back, game tar, let's just close the tag off. And you'll notice that now, at least with this, I can go ahead and actually set the target that he's gonna be following. So I might give that a better naming convention, but let's just leave that for now. So let's go ahead and now drag player. Uh, let's zoom my chat quickly. Let's go and drag player, select him again, drag player over onto the target. So we know that this is the person we're gonna be following. And then back to our script, we can then finish up the last bit. So in the start function, we're gonna go target, which is the target that we're going to want to obviously get where he currently is. And we're gonna go equals tar uh, dot, and we need to get obviously component to get where he's currently at, his position, component, and that would be transform, so difficult to remember all of it. Um, transform, and it's closed obviously. And that would be uh, transform, transform. So get component, and that looks about right. tar.get component, uh, transform, and then we can go ahead and set the, the chase obviously, which is quite critical. So yeah, we're gonna basically just do the following. We're going to run uh, the, the transform, 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 dot position, parameters equals vector to dot move towards, 
move towards move towards and then we can go ahead and just close that and then we can fill the uh, from position which is going to be transform right transform dot position which is enemy transform dot position go to target target which we've now set in the start dot position and then we can do speed which is the variable above the float variable to, and then we can multiply the speed by delta which is time dot delta time okay let's just double check it uh, we've got the game object right we're filling it with that bar there we can give that a better naming convention we can say player to chase or something it doesn't matter let's call that yeah um let's call, yeah it doesn't matter uh, tar and we've got target it's tar transform and then on the update we're going to go chase so this theoretically now should get our little enemy to chase down all right there is a not correct a little error obviously there's a spelling error here. Oh, there it is get the component spelled incorrectly so get component and that should be correct fantastic that should just disappear there we go fantastic so there we've got the speed currently set it to three and i've got the player that i'm going to chat so i'm going to go ahead and play this quickly he should come to me now as you can see which is pretty rad but you'll notice that he's going through the walls okay so a few things that we need to do here is we need to just stop that quickly and we need to add two very critical things so like we've done over on player we've got the rigid body 2d we need to do the same so i'm going to go yeah add component and let's go rigid body 2d Let's go and then, I'm sorry, that's box collider. My humble apologies, rigid body 2D. And let's set that to dynamic. Let's set the gravity to zero. Because if you go ahead and play this now, you'll notice he'll drop straight off the screen. You see it falls off because of the gravity. So we need to set the gravity to zero. The angular drag, we can set to a thousand. This often helps with collisions. Set that to a thousand. Uh, and then uh, let's freeze rotation that he doesn't rotate because I don't have the animation for that So let's play that now. He should still go through but let's just make sure he moves correctly Fantastic then the last thing we need to do is add component and then a box collider 2d and that should stop him from going through Let's go ahead and play that Fantastic because that's a solid unit so he can't get to me I can't get to him but if I come around he should be able to follow me and he should get stuck there which is really what we want. Right, fantastic. So let's go do a second thing where we basically get him to pause. Opposed to really chasing us down, let's get him to, um, to pause. Let's try that. So let's go over onto our script. And we're gonna basically bring in a, a if else, yeah, basically um, in the update. So we've got this that is fold, which is critical. But now what we wanna do is we want to check to make sure that obviously this player is in fact, um, uh, he there's going to be to know the distance between us. We need to do that So the thing we need to add here now is a, another variable and we're gonna call that variable public float and uh, Public float and yeah, we're gonna say stopping distance stopping distance distance Right so that we can set that variable stopping distance then we're going to just change this ever so slightly um we're going to keep this here but we're going to wrap this around we're going to go if and let's just first close the if statement off uh let's first do that it's always good practice uh, so that we at least know exactly where we are i'm going to go ahead and just copy this in the if all right cut Get it behind else tab that quickly and let's go ahead and build the parameter so yeah we're going to go vector 2 vector 2 distance distance uh, and then we want to check those distance which is going to be a transform position uh, which is the from transform dot position position against the target target dot position and then uh, the, is greater than the stoppage stop stopping distance distance the variable that we're going to fill okay so basically what we're saying that if the distance between the player we're checking that distance we're calculating it is greater than what we're going to set now in the in unity then go ahead and obviously um, 
you know, walk walk him. If he if it's sh smaller than that, less than, than that, then go ahead and make him stop. So let's go file save. And we could just double check that before we go over. And there's an error. So we just double check the spinning. And there's another error. Right, great. So that should be fine. Go ahead and click save. Now we need to just set that variable, the range variable. So if we see our little player, we'll see that we've got the stopping distance. I'm gonna go ahead and set that to two. And that it should stop our player um, between the distance once he's calculated what the distance is. If it's a uh, greater than two, then you should stop. And there it is. Fantastic. All right, guys, so that is it for today's tutorial. We're going to be doing some animations with regards to the attack, um, you could say, uh, animations and attack uh, components with regards to both enemy as well as player. Uh, we'll do that in the next up and coming. This is unfortunately not a series, so we're going to be tackling odds and ends in Unity and get you guys quickly up to scratch with regards to how powerful Unity can actually be. But as always, guys, if you're new to the channel, if you could hit that subscribe, that'll be pretty awesome. And the little thumbs up, we appreciate the love, and we'll catch you guys in the next one.